Coach, thank you. We are over 4,000 miles away from where you're seated in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England, and Wembley Stadium. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Cleveland Browns and his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. And the Minnesota Vikings. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. On second down, Cook. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. They just do get the playoff. Now Cousins. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Now that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Returnable here for Callaway. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now. First and 10, just shy of the 30. First carry for Nick Chubb. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Daniil Hunter. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Mayfield in this Browns offense, staring at a third and long now after the sack. Third and long for Mayfield. This is the tight end to Joku. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Play fake. Cousins. Oh, and he'll just get rid of this one deep. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. 
Well, it doesn't take any great analysis. No jokes, partner, okay? All right, on this one. But we just know that we're going to see this as the game moves forward. There's going to be two guys on him on just about every snap. It's kind of a dare to throw his way, but they have to keep throwing his way. The benefits could be great. You throw it to a great receiver, he could come down with it anyway. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. T.J. Carey right there in coverage. Well, I've got to give him some credit there. He tried to sell the out route. He tried to sell it hard. And as a receiver, what you're really trying to do is maneuver a defender inside to give yourself a little more cushion breaking to the out. But how about the defender reading it really well, not buying the fake or the maneuver inside, and getting to the sideline and helping break up the pass. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Anthony Harris on the tackle. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. We're scoreless after one. A run for Nick Chubb, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Some of these play calls. I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. To throw Mayfield. And he's got his man. That's Landry. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Mayfield looks to throw. Screen play. Johnson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Now, that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this Looking for Landry, and it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. Trying to get it to Landry there. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of six there on first. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. 
They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Now Cook. And he will score! Touchdown, Vikings! Dalvin Cook, 26 yards, as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. So they went to the ground game on third, hoping to pick up the first. They also picked up a touchdown. Offensive linemen so used in this situation to having to pass block. All right, you're looking at what it is, third down. They don't care that it's third and whatever. They figure they're going to throw the ball. And when you call a running play, I think you I think you energize them. I think you juice them up because I haven't met offensive linemen yet that likes to pass block more than they like to run block. And they opened up some nice holes there for him, and he took it to the house. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, Everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. On second and nine, Mayfield. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Mayfield on play action. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Polk went on to kick as he sends it away. Taken from just outside the 30. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out comes Minnesota. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads. They don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. This is third and one, very likely four down territory even if they don't get it though. Let's it fly for Thielen. Looking for Thielen, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell. And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. Boy, Brandon, that's what I'd call an ill-advised pass right there on third down. I mean, you just need a yard or two to keep the drive going. Instead, he's trying to hit a home run. You've got to really like your chances if you're going to take a shot like that. Now Chuck. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Play fake, Mayfield, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. So we have reached. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime.
As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Browns drive about to get started. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, you know? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. From the gun, Mayfield. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Daniil Hunter picks up his second sack of the afternoon. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? Mayfield from the gun on third down. He's going to look deep down the field. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Coverage there by the safety, Harrison Smith. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From just shy of midfield, Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A game there of 30 big ones. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And yeah, he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Here's Cook. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Welcome back now here in London. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll run for it with Cook. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because 
Him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that can come back and get you. Yeah, this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said Keith, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right keeping hope alive and past the 40 before he's out of bounds a good pick up there 21 yards working the sideline there good route good catch first down and he gets out of bounds now you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away they can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively that's how it's going to work sidelines and incompletions to use the clock now a first down throw complete downfield a good pick up there 26 yards from Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10 down at the 31. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Mayfield tosses one complete to Landry. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. They'll run with Chubb. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. On second and goal, Mayfield. This linebacking core, they hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing... Not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they're able to retain possession. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Everson Griffin in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Fourth down, Mayfield. Forced out to his left. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Xavier Rhodes, the quarterback, there in coverage. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right.
Now a give running right. It's Cook. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And a cutback. Right. Touchdown, Vikings! Dalvin Cook, 51 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. When you know you've got a home run hitter on your side of the ball, and you know that he can score from anywhere on the field, it usually inspires the rest of the guys to do their jobs even better. That resulted in a lot of great blocks downfield because they knew if they gave him space, he could do exactly what he did, put the ball in the end zone. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. It caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. They go play action. Mayfield, and he's got the hook up to Landry. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He's got an open man. He completes it to Callaway. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. And in their own territory, needing only a few inches, they're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. On fourth down, they snap it to Mayfield. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Linval Joseph. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down in this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> What happened there? Was that just a missed assignment on the O-line? It certainly felt like it, but also the speed of the play. When you're talking about defensive end, they want to be ahead of the clock, don't they? They want to be upfield, making plays on every snap. How about his agility there to run that one down? A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches. Two-minute drill. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. Here's second in goal, operating from the eight-yard line. They try again with Cook. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? 
almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, let's see what they do. They're knocking on the door here in the second quarter. And you know what you look at on your play sheet? Your two-point conversion plays. Because you've drawn up a number of them in today's football. You don't just have one or two for the game. You have more like six or seven. Which one do you like here? Because that's essentially what you're going for right now. That spot of the field, call one of those and go get six. it through and that will do it and okay so much for our halftime break apparently we're going to get right back to it as they say here in London all to play for as we are back underway in the second half that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter, they come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are... And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. The struggles continue here offensively. Still nothing for him on the scoreboard, and now an interception. Yeah, the offense looks extremely sluggish, not really in sync at all. Dare I say, it looks like it got left behind in customs. Oh, you've had that in your back pocket. <laughs> you were waiting for that. Probably should have left it in my back pocket, too. Well played. Trying to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Now Cousins in a double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Mitchell. And a terrific return as he'll take it up past the 35. The Browns drive about to get started. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. First play of the drive, a first down run. Well, that sets you up for whichever way you want to go. Do you come right back and run the football again because you've got them on their heels? And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Daniil Hunter credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. To try again after the sack, Mayfield. His throw incomplete. Antonio Callaway, the intended receiver, but now it'll be third down. I think someone's going to get in the QB 1s here when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That'd be the second person in his ear because he's here in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like he said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Well, that play really didn't fool them. They completed the screen pass, but for lost yardage, a really nice play by the defense. And he missed it. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Thought that might be the goose egg breaker. Still stuck on zero. Yeah, this is still a tight game, too. we got to keep that in mind because that miss there, you hang your head, you let it affect you the next time you go out there, then you really hurt your ball club. Get yourself together. You might get another opportunity, and they're going to count on you to put it through the post. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A 
Again, it's Cook. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Cousins now from the 50. Flushed out right. And an alley to run. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Welcome back now here in London. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. comes in this might be a free play there goes a deep ball in zone and intercepted maybe the turning point they need picked off by Terrence Mitchell well we looked at each other right when he flinched we knew that that flag was coming yeah offsides easy call mark off the five and keep it moving now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. Now Cook running right. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Decent start defensively to this series. They've got to stop them here and get this ball back. I like the way you phrase that, partner. Decent start. But now it's got to be more about the ball. It's all about the ball. Getting it away from them because making good tackles is one thing, but the clock will run out on you. You've got to have the football back for your offense. They run it again with Cook. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they score touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in touchdown city. Barely got the extra point, And that makes our score 17-0. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And I think the ball's out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. The pass receiver turned into a runner, then he turned into a fumbler, and it goes the other way for six. I love your description. Although for the offense, they're not too happy about it. But for the defense, what a big-time play for them. Never give up on anything. Sometimes you create your own points. But the receiver, hard to fault him. He's just going for extra yards. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, but you have to take care of the football. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. First down, Mayfield. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. To throw, Mayfield. Going deep here for Landry. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the Pro Bowler, Anthony Barr. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Yeah. 
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe, yeah, you've taught me this before, maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them, protect them, take care of the ball, move it downfield, run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game, reward them. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Just a yard on the gain there, and that leaves him with 14 yards still to go on third down. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And they finally take him down, but not before he reaches the 43. A big play there out of Cook. 43 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Cousins here to throw. He'll dump this off to Cook. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. I call it no gain there on the first down play. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. They go play action. Cousins. They'll let this go for the end zone. This is caught. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And this was truly a total team effort.